I love building stuff. I love inventing stuff. I've invented a lot of stuff. Um, discovered a lot of stuff too, especially magnetism. Um, one of my favorite TV shows is the most perfect example I've ever seen. I don't know if it's my, my favorite TV show. Um, perfect example I've ever seen is the perfect analogy for lenses. People don't understand lenses. I mean, they really don't. They think that, well, it's got X criteria of uh, resolution. It's got X criteria of vignetting. They try to quantify everything about a lens, but a lens cannot be quantified. Now, that TV show is called uh, Forged in Fire. I've seen like 30 episodes so far. I think that's what it's called. I've seen, how can I see 30 episodes of a TV show and forget the title of the show? Anyway, they bring in all of these... Uh, these are do-it-yourself uh, knife and sword makers. They have their little forge in the garage, you know, a furnace forge, and they're sitting there hammering. They have, like, a mechanical hammers they're hammering. And uh, there are a billion different ways to make steel. You know, the, the, sa the same sort of idiots out there think, well, what's that made of? It's made out of steel. And anybody that's an expert in steel, they're like, oh, you're such a moron. The same thing is true of glass. It's like, what's inside of a, of a camera lens? Uh, it's glass. It's like, oh, you're such an idiot. I've told you about all this freaky crap that they stick into lenses, like these lenses, for example. There's a lot of radioactive crap in these lenses. It's like, why do they stick that crap in there? Why do they stick all this freaky stuff in steel? You have stainless steel, carbon steel, soft steel, hard steel. Yeah, there is no such thing as a perfect lens, and there's never any such thing as perfect steel. I have a knife collection, so I... I like knives and swords, kind of. I love neat little pocket knives. And um, there's different grades of steel. Some of them are marked on there 30V. It's a type of uh, stainless. People don't realize. They think, well, it's just a steel knife. It's like, no, you're such an idiot. Um, the, the Japanese themselves, I mean, hundreds of years ago, perfected God knows how many different types of steel. Now we have stainless steel, high carbon steel. It's like, why do they stick that crap in the steel? It's like, why do they stick radioactive shit inside of a lens? You know, you know, it's 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 high gamma and beta radiation. Admit, why would they stick that in there? Because it has unique properties. Why do they stick lanthanum dioxide lenses? Why do they stick um, uh, niobium oxide, niobium dioxide in the lenses? Why does Zeiss? The secret formula for Zeiss is lead and Voigtlander lead. It is lead glass. The secret is, is they don't tell you how much they stick in there and what process they stick in there. They stick in other things in the glass. Steel making is exactly, knife making is 100% the same thing as lens design. These people make these blades, they go for like a $10,000 contest and uh, they have to hammer out the steel and they do various tests. Now, a blade that is super, super uh, hard, you think, well, that's the best blade. No, and I knew this before watching the TV show, of course. I mean, I knew all of this crap. Because um, I actually used to deal and use knives when we talk about the benefits and minuses. Some really awesome blades, they rust really, really easy. These blades made by Fisker in Sweden, I mean, they will rust if you look at them cross-eyed, but they're great for sharpening. They're, if, a, if a knife is too hard... It's like, well, it holds its edge, but when you want to go to sharpen it, it's a pain in the crotch. Also, if a knife is too hard, while it uh, may work perfectly well slicing one thing, it also doesn't give, and it's too hard, and it'll shatter. I mean, it's the same thing with a tree. Some trees in a windstorm, they don't bend much at all. And when a big windstorm or a hurricane comes along, they snap. You know, that's it. Uh, trees, like in my front yard, their their trunks are actually flexible, kind of like, uh, you know, a, uh, a a piece of licorice. When a wind comes along, I mean, that tree will just bend way the hell over. It'll touch the ground bending over, and when the storm's gone, it'll pop by. Same thing is true of steel. Blade might, same thing is true of lenses. You keep thinking that lenses are empirical. This is the, the BS in your brain and everybody else's brains when it comes to lenses. It's like, well, it's got a refractive index of so-and-so and so. You so. know, you don't get it. There are a million different ways to make a kitchen knife, a cutting knife, a sword, an axe by adding different elements into the steel to give it certain hardnesses, certain characteristics, certain ways it flexes when it's hit. You know, one might be perfect for chopping, the other one might break when chopping. 
It's like, well, they're made of the same steel. Yeah, but they were forged differently, you know? You could take the exact same steel, you could bend it over on itself over and over again and make a Damascus out of the exact same steel. If you harden it differently, it has different characteristics than the same steel over here. You know, it's not only how you forge it, how you harden it, how you shape it. The exact same crap is true. of. There's no such thing as a perfect blade, okay? Pocket knife, sword, axe, um, any of these things. It's what the steel's made out of, how it's forged, how it is shaped. All of this crap is 100% identical in lens design. 100%. Any and every lens ever made, when you go to any website and you look at the specifications for lens, every damn lens made by anybody ever does not include this really, really, really neat information that the lens manufacturers are never going to effing tell you. What that is, is the crap, the magic crap that they stick in that molten glass like radioactive thorium. It's like, well, I know there's thorium. In yeah, but you don't know how much thorium is in here. You don't know when it was added. You don't know what other additives were put in there. You don't know exactly how it was formed. The same thing is true of steel. You could analyze the steel and say, well, it's this carbon content. That still doesn't tell you how it was forged, how it was hammered, how it was reshaped. All of this stuff, as far as a knife manufacturer, blade manufacturer, which I watched this show, it's great. You know, they, they give these people the same piece of stock. And they, they all, they're all hammering on and they're all making their own little designs. But they each forge them slightly different. One might get a little more heat treatment before it is quenched in the oil than the other one. And that radically end up with four different pieces of bar stock steel that are the same. But each one of the four blacksmiths or sword makers or knife makers, they will turn out a completely different product with completely different characteristics. Completely different. Some of them will be soft and bend, and that's, they're fine for cutting. They're easy to sharpen. Other ones end up with soft steel. The other ones end up with steel that's too hard. And therefore, that's a good thing. It's hard. It holds its edge. Yeah, but when it's really hard, it's also brittle. And therefore, it is not good for certain things. This is the crap that that I know that people out there don't know is that they think well the lens, you know it's got good resolution and it's sharpened and it doesn't vignette yeah but what about micro contrast what about the phase of the lens what about the bandwidth of the lens what about the gain of the lens these are all characteristics unique to lenses and each lens design is absolutely unique and not only is each lens design absolutely unique what the hell is in the glass and when they stick it in the glass and how they stick it in the glass and what else they stick in the glass is equally as important as so far as how it renders the image. Equally as important. The reason why this 50mm f1.4 Super Tacovar is rated as one of the top 10, if not actually, I think it's one of the top 5 highest rated lenses ever. Not by me, just forget about me, by people in general. Like, oh my god, this lens is just a shit. It's awesome, it's incredible. It's because it's got some unique properties. It's made extremely well in the mid-60s in Japan. But it's also got this radioactive thorium in there. And the way radioactive thorium handles light from near spectrum to far spectrum, blue light, red light, is magical. We can't use this crap anymore in lenses because it's radioactive. We've replaced it with lanthanum oxide, niobium oxide. Zeiss and Voigtlander use lead. A lot of the characteristics of dielectric acceleration are... Also, let me grab the phone really quick, and that was the video. <laughs>